screen in front of me. Thank you, Sam. Um, okay. No, it's fine. It's, it, no, it just takes time to think. I think it's an old computer. It's, it's working. It's late. Well, good afternoon, everybody. I have to say, when Keith yeah. asked me to come and talk at this particular workshop, I said to him, what are you thinking? Because my speciality is in resilient and regenerative design. It's not about information and BIM and all of these wonderful things. So he forced me to think a little bit about what it is that I'm going to talk about. And the, uh, two questions came up. And the, 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 the first is, what is it that we are integrating? So what is the kind of information that we are integrating? And so it's information, what is the information, and also what is it that we're integrating, and how are we integrating. So I'm going to play around a little bit, but to do that I have to go a little bit into what we mean with resilient and regenerative design, so that you understand what the types of information is that we may need to look at. But I can tell you that this is actually much bigger than building information management, it is a lot or modeling, it's a lot more bigger than, than cities even. It, it goes all the way up to planetary modeling. So it becomes an interesting challenge, I think, for the lifestyle of BIM, as Sean said. So they said a new discourse that has been um, gaining prominence in the past few years, the whole idea of resilience that came about the understanding that we are now dealing with large-scale systems change and that this is inevitable. And how are we going to respond to that? We, can, we have to continue to mitigate, to make sure that um, we, we reduce the impact of what we are doing, but we have to build our resilience, and to do that, we have to adapt to, what is the, to the changes, but we also have to start transforming our systems. And this forces us to think in terms of integrated systems, and think about whole systems. And there's an emergent, uh, discourse coming up in terms of regenerative design. So if we have to transform, how are we going to transform? How are we going to get out of this problem? And we're dealing with all of these changes and destruction of systems, but out of that we can get new life. So we need to think about new systems, new relationships, and new values that's going to guide us. And to do this, we better use living systems as a model because we are part of a living system and the fact that we've ignored this is part of one of the reasons why we are experiencing this large-scale systems change. And what do we mean if we have to think in terms of living systems is we have to start thinking about cross-scale connections. We have to put on our thinking hats to say, well, we're dealing with a complex adaptive system and what does that mean for us? And part of that is that we are dealing with systems that self-organize, and out of that self-organizing, new properties emerge. So it's not necessarily able, um, important for us to think about how we control things and think about the outcomes, but rather about how do we understand these connections and how do we monitor what emerges out of it. The good thing about these discourses is that make something very simple for us, and that is what it is that we should sustain and it's very simple, we need to sustain the functional integrity of this little blue ball and the social and the ecological systems and the social ecological system that sits on this ball. And what we should develop is the ability of the system to adapt, to transform, because change is the one constant we have in life. And to do that, we need to develop the creative potential of the system. It also means that we have to start thinking of ourselves in relationship and of this, this mutuality. Pamela Mangenbill Reed says is beautiful. It's about the caring of mutuality of relationships that comes from deepening connection with a living place. It's essential to launching and sustaining a regenerative process. And what do we mean with that mutuality of relationships and how do we understand it and how do we get information about that and integrate that? So to understand what these two concepts mean for us, we, and for the kind of information we need to connect, is we need to understand the following things. We need to understand the story of place. We need to understand multiple stability regimes and how these play out in things like our cities. And what do we mean when we talk about multiple scales of cross-scale interactions? The whole notion of episodic change. And then the ability to absorb or adapt to that change or transform our systems in response to change. And to do this through co-creative processes and potential. So these are the, the, the key cornerstones of the resilience and the regenerative approaches to development. Story of place, very simple. 
it is what is happening, what is the history of this place? And the history is the geography, it's the, how we've then started to change the land, how we, we, we change our, our land uses, the history of the built environment in that place, but also the history and the current patterns of movement, of networks, of changes of information, of interaction between all the citizens in that place, all the agents in that place. And these agents or citizens are not just individuals, they are also our political um, systems, they are the uh, fauna and flora of the place that we are in. So all of these are, are citizens, whether we see them as individuals or whether they are a collective group in, this, in the sense that a company it can be a citizen. And we need to understand the flows of energy and information between these different actors and agents and, and the structures. One of the key things that, that comes out of resilience is the, the notion of stability regimes, to understand when we are shifting from one type of a system to another type of system. And there's usually in natural systems, there's certain indicators that will tell us, yes, we're now moving from a, a forest or a savanna area into a desert area. So we, and there's been a lot of work done around what are s s stability systems in cities, but, or, or in ecosystems, but what are they in cities? So what are those thresholds and variables? And this is one of the things that we then start to, we need to start understanding is where are we in relationship to those thresholds and variables? Because that's the things that helps us to understand how resilient the system will be, what are the potential for change, what is the potential that sits in the system, and where is the danger signals in that particular system. The second aspect that comes also from resilient theories is the now notion of diversity, now important diversity is in a system, and we have changed our, our cities mainly into these sort of monocultures of poverty or monocultures of wealth, and they are both equally unresilient. But this diversity also goes across scales, and it is the kind of the responses that we have, whether it's responses in the residential functions of the city, or the commercial functions of the city, or just the, the green functions of our cities. And they go across scales and across levels of formality in cities. So this is also the kind of information that we need to understand if we want to understand how to guide our cities through the changes that are coming. Just a simple example of what we mean here is something like retail response diversity, where you have in a single city things that sit at a shopping center scale where you might have international um, brands selling their clothes and you have an international network right down to the guy on the street corner who's selling umbrellas today and tomorrow he's selling sports paraphernalia and the day after that he's selling um, back to school things because he's constantly adapting to the changes in his environment, then he has that ability to have a, a quick change around in, his, in, 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 in what is happening around him. Looking at cross scale interactions, I'm not sure if these are quite readable. I quickly cut and pasted them from uh, my PhD student Edna Perez's work, which where we are starting to look at understanding that the city works across different scales and that you are part of an international, the national scale, and you go, then go down all the way to this, the, the individual household scale. And that these cross-scale interactions can be change, can bring changes from one scale to another. So whatever happens at the, on the global scale can have it a filter down all the way to the individual, but also things that happens at an individual level, that kind of decisions people make, start filtering up and they create different pressures. But there's a different way of looking at this as well. When we start talking about understanding that we have different disturbances in the system, we, in resilience we tend to focus on the pulse disturbances, which are disasters and f like floods and fires, but there's also the press disturbances, things like poverty, things like the spatial injustices of our systems and of our cities. And that they have these um, impacts and influences across scales, but also across different levels and different um, aspects of the system. So you can have something that sits, that is a pressure in the natural system that actually brings about changes in the political system. And it's, a, it's, it's not as just as simple as the physical scales, but it's also looking at all these different levels. 
we also need to understand the morphology and how that enables emergence and self-organization, how it structures our network structures, um, allows the city to be more responsive and to be more resilient and allow it to adapt to, to per possible perturbation in the system. Then one of the other key aspects of resilience thinking is the notion of episodic change that's expressed usually through the adaptive cycle where you go, a system goes through the phases of release, reorganization, growth and conservation and you can map um, things